a lot of people ask, uh, one of the most common questions I get asked is, how, how did you meet V? How, how did your relationship with V start? And I'll go ahead and tell that little story now as I start in with this, because I guess it's a valid question. Um, when I first moved here, about five years ago, I would go every, every week, at least every week, sometimes twice a week, to the end of Soy Bacau, right by Patia Klang, only a five minutes walk from where we are here now. And there's little shops there, and I would go to one shop in particular, but the shops offered a foot massage for 100 baht for the hour. And if you guys know me, most of you know me a little bit, you know that I, I like a value, and I thought that was a bargain. So I would go in there and get my, my foot massage. And I was rather smitten with the ladies in there, and I was going there for about a year, almost a year, and a new lady started. And, you know, one time I went in, and one of the other ladies said, you know, this new lady's struggling, she doesn't speak English, and she just got here, she doesn't have any regular customers, but she does a really good foot massage. So when you come next time, you should, you should try her. And I thought, well, that's pretty big of you because there's some proprietary practices going on. They have regular customers, and for her to, you know, wanna, want me to try another, another lady just in the, to help, help her out, a lady that was struggling, I said, sure. So the next visit, I chose, I said, give me the new girl. And the new girl was V. So I got to know her a little bit during that hour. And I came back subsequently on subsequent trips and requested her again. And we always had a little chat and a, a foot massage. And one night I asked her, or one day, well, I was usually there during the day, I said, when you get off work at night, uh, why don't you come out uh, to my friend's bar? There's some kind of event. It's at your place, Nick. I, I forget the event. But whatever it was, there's always an event. She, she, she agreed right away. But she couldn't find the place. She, could, she didn't know any, anything in Patia. The only thing she knew was the two blocks where her shop was on Soy Bacal. So uh, by the graces of God, she somehow found it. After, after much consternation, she found it. And we had a couple of drinks and had a good time. And it was good to you know, be with her in an environment other than at her shop. And I made a habit from that point forward. I lived in Bang Sen, and I would come down here to Patia about every week, sometimes twice a week. But whenever I would come and I was going out in the evening, I invited her along. So that's kind of how it was. And it went along that way for a little while until one day, until one visit. And I came in, came into town, same thing. And after our night, I dropped her off at work. And I wanted to go down to Patia Beach and film a little uh, five minute clip about something I forget. And she called me back and she said, my shop's going to close for two weeks. You guys remember that? Two weeks closing? That was a, that was a long two weeks. But uh, she said, my shop's going to close for two weeks. I said, no worries. I'll, I'll come back and we'll talk because I was just on my way home anyway. And I got up there and she had this kind of bewildered look and she said, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next two weeks. And I said, I, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next two weeks either. But grab a bag, throw some clothes in it and toothbrush, and hop on the back of the bike and we'll go up to Bang Sen and we'll figure it out together. So pretty smooth move, huh? <laughs> so I, I remember that day I, I had to stop right out here on Patia Klang on the way out of town and buy her a helmet. She didn't have a, a motorcycle helmet and I wasn't gonna go all the way up Sukhumvit Road with her on the back without a helmet. So we did that. And then I was, I was on my way up Sukhumvit Road it's about an hour up to, <clears throat> up to Bang Sen from here. And I, I got this idea, I said, you know, if, if things are gonna be closed, what the heck are we gonna do sitting around the condo? So I got off in Sriracha. There's a couple Sriracha residents here that I've met already today. I got off at Sriracha and I said, let's take the ferry over to Koh Si Chan and go out there. It's right on the way and uh, I'll tell you guys, by the way, I know a lot of you weren't here during the pandemic, some of you were, but Going to the islands during the pandemic became kind of the coveted thing to do here. Uh, the people that were living here then, that was kind of like the getaway, to go to one of the islands. I might have been the very first to do that. I was on a ferry to an island while they were still shuttering the bars in Patia for the first time in uh, March of 2020. So anyway, we, we went out there. We had, uh, we had a good couple days out there. I, I shot some video while I was out there. And then about the second day, we started hearing rumblings that the ferries would, would be shut down. And we said, we better get back. We don't want to get stuck out here. So we went back. 
I went back and the video that I made, I had put together and I uploaded it the next day. And she, at that point, had kind of no idea what I did on YouTube or anything. She really didn't understand it or, or the concept. But I showed her this. I said, look, we were here yesterday. This is where we were. These are the things we did. And then here's the video. And now people are watching it all over the world. And they're asking about you. Because a couple keen-eyed viewers said, who's that girl in the background with the long hair? Yeah. And I showed her that. And I said, that's, that's you. They're asking about you. And she was amazed. She, she couldn't believe that. So from that point, she started taking a little bit more interest and that kind of snowballed. She became a, a bigger and bigger part. And she was a little camera shy at first, but very quickly, she, very quickly she kind of got into it. And instead of me making videos, we made videos. I got to tell you guys, you know, a lot of, at least some of what you have seen on the screen, she recorded, she shot. Some of what you rec uh, have seen on the screen, she produced. In other words, there are some videos that couldn't have been made if not for V. As simple as that. So she was a, a, a very big, a very big part of that. And I'll tell you what, what drove her, and it's you guys. It's all of you in here. Because even when we moved here back to Patia, she would come home in the evenings and tell me what she did that day. She went to the market, she got her nails done, whatever it was. And she would always, the story always ended the same way. Two people came up to me and said hi, that they recognized me on YouTube. And she was just so surprised by that and so amazed of uh, whether she was at the beach or uh, wherever she was. It was different every day. But that was a constant occurrence and she would always come home and talk about that. And each day she was more amazed than the last. During all that time, you know, we, we traveled a lot. So we kind of traveled all over the place. And it was a little bit, it was a little bit weird uh, traveling with V because I was the tour guide. I, I thought that was kind of a role reversal. I thought she should be the tour guide. It's her country. I've never been to most of these places. She should be showing me around, but I was showing her around. But at the same time, I was honored to say, well, gee, I'm taking you someplace that maybe you dreamed of going when you were a kid, or maybe even as an adult thinking, well, it would be nice to go here, it would be nice to go there. Her frame of reference, uh, part of Ayutthaya Utaitani, little forays into Bangkok for business, she really hadn't seen much of the country. So every time we would travel, I, I, never, I never heard her say no. So I would say, hey, what about if we go to uh, wherever? What if, what if we go to Rayong? She would, her eyes would bright up. She would, when do we go? Do we go now? Do we go tomorrow? You know, it was never, well, you sure you want to go there? I don't know about that. It was always, let's go, let's go. There were two certainties anytime we traveled. One, one certainty would be that she would find a person or persons that were more than happy to help us. She ingratiated herself to people very easily. She, she, she had a very curious nature, and I think that helped. And there would always be somebody there that she would just instantly meet, connect with, and they would tell us where things are, what happens here, all the local information, things like that. They would help us out. The other certainty is she would find somebody or something that needed help. She was very helpful in nature. Uh, v was a, a person of very limited means, but she would give the last bot in her pocket to somebody on the street if they needed it. I've seen her do it. So, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the things that happened constantly. And it could be an animal, it could be a, a person, whatever it was, the, her kindness knew no bounds. Uh, one of the traits that I respected the most about V. Uh, wherever we went, if she saw somebody in need, she wanted to help. As, as time went on, a lot of you may, might know that <laughs> I sent her to school. I found a school here in Patia, and that's where she could study English, learn English. In fact, there are some students that she went to school with here today in the audience, some friends that she met. And she went to school, I got her enrolled, but you know, when you go to school, there's always gonna be that first day. You got a first day of school. And she enrolled with her, with her best friend, Orn. Say hi, Orn. And I was so happy she went with Orn because she wasn't there by herself, you know. But she had this first day of school and I took her to the school and I remember that day, I couldn't wait for her to get home. I, I, had, I had more than a passing interest in this too. I was wondering, 
what she was going to learn. Was she going to come home and be able to say the ABCs or what it was going to be? Maybe a sentence. Maybe she could put a sentence together. So I was waiting eagerly for her to get back home, and she finally did. She came in and set down her bags and set down all her stuff and started talking about, well, I need a notebook and I need pencils. And I said, okay, okay, well, what did you learn? Did, you, did they teach you how to say anything today in school? And I could see the wheels turning and she was trying to put this together and or, or take the new, or ate the new, this new language and she wanted to get it right. And I waited and finally, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe they taught her to say, hi, my name is V and I come from Thailand or something like that. I, that's what I'm thinking. But she finally gets it together and here comes her sentence and it, and it, it went just like this. I have no money. <laughs> I, I said, this is why I sent you to school. They taught you I have no money. That's the first sentence they taught you. And she smiled and laughed. But, you know, in hindsight, this happens to grade school children. They come home with some infamous one-liners. It's not the teacher that teaches them that. It's the classmates. So some of you that are here that <laughs> went to school with her probably taught her that. I'm going to miss V a lot. I mean, I miss, I miss V already because over the last five months. It's been exactly five months and two days from the time she was diagnosed to her departure on Monday. But over that five months, systematically, everything that she was to me was, was taken. Uh, she was a lover. Uh, she was a confidant, a partner, and a friend. And slowly it all just was taken until the final. But her work here, here is done, um, clearly. Her work here is done. A lot of people say, or some people will say, you know, only the good die young. Um, there might be some truth to that. It does seem true sometimes. But in her case, I would just say, you know, the, the amount of love and caring that she gave to her fellow inhabitants of this planet was enough for two lifetimes. So for that, I think, yeah, I think she did her, her work. So she'll go back to the light from when she came and uh, we will, the rest of us will, will get by. So what's next? What's, uh, what comes next? What, what comes next for me? Where do I go? As I alluded to at the beginning, at one o'clock on Friday, there's a cremation here and I'll, I'll attend that. And then after that, I'm going away to a place. You see, for the last three years, uh, V and I talked about doing a video. And it's a special video that can only be done at a certain place at a certain time. And you know, as we sit here today, we're on the cusp or the eve, I guess you could say, of Song Kran. So it has to be during Song Kran. It has to be done at a certain place. And she was really looking forward to this. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to do that video. Without her, but I'm hoping she'll be there in spirit. It might not be as good, but I'll do my best. I'll, I'll probably do some traveling around uh, after that. Um, I need some, I need, I need a change of scenery. Uh, I, this has kind of kept me here. I just need a, a change of scenery for a while, maybe some relaxation, some rest, and some reflection on all this, and some time to gather thoughts and focus those thoughts on where I go next and what comes next for me. So that's what I have to say. I will give anybody in here a chance to speak. If you have something you'd like to say, a memory of V, I will give you that opportunity. But I'll tell you this, uh, she's looking down on us now and she's got a big smile for all of us. And her eyes are full of admiration. They really are. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. And if anybody would like to say something or if you have any questions, let me know.